You're listening to Run, Are You Win? Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. As pastor of the Smithton Outpouring and the Kansas City Revival, Steve is a leading voice of revival worldwide. Steve shares his life-changing encounters with God, along with biblical teaching that equips you to experience and lead lasting revival. Come, run with Steve and expect God to revive us now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Revive Us Now podcast. I am your host, Steve Gray, where we're going to be talking about everything I can think of to share with you about revival and the move of God, the presence of God, getting God to really come down and manifest himself in our churches, in our homes, and, of course, the nation and the world. And today we're going to be talking about living a debt-free life. Now, you might think, what as debt-free, being debt-free, have to do with revival? Well, just keep listening because uh, everything it has everything to do with it. it it has everything to do with it. And living a debt-free life doesn't really have much to do with money. Now, most of us, that's our goal. We want to be debt-free. And I think you should be debt-free uh, financially. And that should be a goal. You should be going that. Get rid of the debt on those credit cards, which so many people have. Those are all great financial plans that I believe in and follow and, and hope you do too. But when you live a debt-free life, it doesn't really have anything to do with money. It might spill over into money, but it's not really, uh, according to the, uh, the Bible, it's not really just not, not owing anybody. You know, the Bible says not to owe anybody anything but to love them. So there's a strength there, and that doesn't mean just money. A lot of people read that into the money thing. And, and you know, just to, just to make sure we're square on this, there might be some people that owe you money, and uh, you just can't afford to say, forget it. You don't owe me anything or whatever. Uh, but that's not, where we're, that's not where we are today. We're talking about living a debt-free life when it comes to the move of God and how it can hinder it or help it. And so it's not just about money. You know, when we talk about Jesus, we immediately get into the, the subject of debt. In fact, that's uh, one of the first things that you present to people or was presented to you. Uh, we used to say it in the Lord's Prayer. You now early on in the Lord's Prayer, people used the word debts, and then later they changed it to trespasses. So when I was growing up in the Methodist church, we'd say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But in, the, in, in a lot of churches and a lot of Bibles, it didn't say it that way. It said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And we could really shake up our theology, couldn't we, if we said, forgive, forgive us our debts when we forget our debtors? And that's scriptural, really, because it says, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. So debt is a big thing. And of course, when we look to the uh, life of Jesus Christ, what's his big ministry? He's going to pay off our debts, right? He's going to pay our debt. And there are songs, uh, you know, he... You paid a debt I could not pay, you know, and all those songs that were written about how he pays for our debts. So Jesus paid for our debts, causing us to be what? In the kingdom of God. We enter the kingdom of God debt free, right? Forgiven, debt free. He forgave us our debts. And hopefully we have the theology of we got to forgive everybody else. So when we talk about living a debt free life, we're not talking about money. Although that's a great thing too. I'd love to talk about that sometime. And that does affect revival. because It affects your spiritual life. Because if you're in debt and there's creditors and phone calls and you don't know where the money's coming from, uh, it wears on you. And you, you can't be the free person that you need to be to serve Jesus. That's another subject. But anyway, in Philippians chapter 2, it says, you should have the same attitude or the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that was in Jesus. And did you know that Jesus has a debt-free mind? He has a debt-free mind. Because what, when he entered into the world with his ministry, what was he doing? He's coming to convince you to follow him, and he's going to take your debts. He's going to give you a debt-free start in the kingdom of God. So Jesus uh, has a, a debt-free mind, and as he's going about ministering, you'll notice you get the feeling... Uh, uh, as he frees people, he frees them. Now, nobody owes him anything. They, he doesn't free them and then, then hold you captive to it, say, you know. Other than, you know, other than to love God with all your heart and to be loyal to having no other gods, it's pretty debt-free. You get to start debt-free, and that's what Jesus did. He just freed people of their debts. And uh, when he frees you of your debt, he doesn't say, now, now you, you owe me one. No, he, you don't owe him anything. 
Get it? Yeah, a debt-free life starts with you don't owe me anything. So if we're going to live the debt-free life, then we need to know what we can do. And one of the things that that hinders that is the double mind, which the book of James mentions in the first chapter, that a double mind minded person should not expect to receive anything from God. And uh, so that means like you got two worlds here going, you got two minds going and let's take forgiveness again. Let's take it. So most people are double minded. Did you know that? Well, that's what hinders getting what says, don't expect to get anything from God. It makes you unstable. Why? Because Let's take forgiveness, like I said. Okay, so you forgive, and you go, well, I've forgiven a lot of people, but almost everybody that calls themselves a Christian has some people they haven't forgiven. That's double-minded. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is going on at the same time. Most people think they're humble. If you, if, well, they may not say it to you, but in their own minds, they say, well, I'm a pretty humble person. And then at the same time, they get caught in pride. So there's humility. And there's pride going on at the same time. One mind is humble. One mind is prideful. And the other is love and hate. A lot of people love a lot of people. And then they hate a people or they, you know, hate might be too strong, but they just don't like them and they despise. Love people and despise other people or judge other people or look down on other people. And uh, that's just shouldn't be. And um, so it's, it causes you to be unstable unreliable and so we need to free those people and so the, the beautiful thing about Jesus is he's so dependable Jesus is dependable he's not unstable why he's single-minded he's single-minded he's always the same and how every day you get up you want to talk to Jesus he's going to be same Jesus today as he is tomorrow he's single-minded so you can begin to see the power of doing this and it's even going to get more powerful in a, in a minute but Along with that double mind, see, that's a, that's a world culture thing in, in our culture, in our, our social structure, in our culture, double-mindedness for the Christian, I'm talking about believers, is just accepted. Is it, I mean, you can go to, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to name names. I wouldn't. You don't need to either, but you can sure think of them. Go to the social media, wherever you want to go social media, and go look at most people's pages, not, not the people really trying to do it right. But just most people who would probably go to church, you know, church folks. And you'll see there they got people they love, people they like, people they dislike, people they banned, people they argue with, people they look down on, people they call them names. What? How can fresh water and stale water come out of the same faucet? You know, it's either fresh water coming out of the faucet or it's, or it's, or it's stale. It's bad. But that's but but we we go along with that. We just sort of expect it. Yeah, there's a little bit of good. There's a little bit of bad. There's a little bit of good in everybody. And then there's that side of everybody. Well, that's double minded. That's what Jesus wasn't. And so that's but but that's the world pattern that has struck religion, struck church. And uh, so the Bible teaches us not to conform to the patterns of this world. Don't conform to that. Well, that would mean this double mind uh, and and a debt-free life, everything we're talking about. And uh, so don't, So basically it says, now listen, here's the kingdom of God. Don't conform, but be transformed. Don't conform, be transformed. You should be transformed. Well, what happens when you're transformed? He said, you, or how do you get transformed? He says, you, trans, you get transformed by renewing your mind. Well, if you renew your mind, that means you're not going to be double-minded anymore. You're going to be single-minded on God. Everything, everybody's going to know who you are when you walk in or you come home. Everybody knows who you are. You're not up, down, and sideways. Nope, you're the same. You're single-minded. You're, you're stable. You're dependable. You are who you are. And so, uh, and so Romans 12 says, don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you know, if you'll do that, it says, and then you will know the will of God. You'll be able to prove it, to show it, to be it, to walk in it. Then you'll know the will of God. If you don't know the will of God for your life, you've got too many minds going on. You got double minded and, uh, you got to settle down to the single mind and be transformed now. If you want to change the way you act, you got to change the way you think. And so that you'll know what God's will really is. So now back to this um, debt-free stuff, because that's what we really want to talk about. The renewed mind uh, is a debt-free mind. Let's talk about relationships, all right? So most, this is most people, all right? Most people, I mean, this is where they are, okay? They are who I'm searching for who I'm supposed to be. 
I remember graduating in my year when I graduated. I was in high school and graduated. And oh, it was everybody, including myself. Everybody went to find themselves. I did the same thing. I was 18 years old. Graduated from high school. We all loaded in the car and took off. And don't even know where we were going. Going to find ourselves. Now, some years later, I'm 23 years old. I realized I was going the wrong direction. The Bible says I'm supposed to lose myself. I lost all those years going trying to find me. And then when I did find me, I didn't like me. And then I had to be changed, to be transformed <laughs> at 23 years old. But anyway, most people are in the world of who am I supposed to be? But the, re re the renewed mind lives debt-free and looks at other people and says, listen, who am I supposed to be to you? See, that's what Jesus was saying. Who am I to you? Who am I to you? I want to be what I'm supposed to be to you. So I'm not looking to be who am I supposed to be to me? What difference does that make? But who am I supposed to be to God? Who am I supposed to be to God? I need to figure that out. Who am I supposed to be to my wife? Who am I supposed to be to my kids? Who am I supposed to be in my case, grandkids, who am I supposed to be to my church and my pastor or my boss at work or whatever? Who, as a Christian with a renewed mind, a stable person, transformed? Now, what I got to do is not figure out who I am. I got to figure out who am I supposed to be for them. And if I do that, then the renewed mind becomes the answer. I need to renew my mind and start living for other people, for God, of course, and for other people. So now we get to this debt-free life, and it doesn't have to do with money. And we remember that Jesus lived, Jesus lived uh, a debt-free life, and then he went about canceling your debt, my debt, right? Now, this says you should have this same mind in you, this renewed mind, this single mind. Have this same mind in you that's in Christ Jesus. Well, if you're going to be like Jesus, you sing that song, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him. All right, well, do it then. Well, what are you going to have to do with your life that's going to move you into a powerful position of revival, renewal, glory of God, presence of God? What's it going to do for you? How do you get there? You start living a debt free life. How do you live a debt-free life? Start thinking this way. You don't owe me anything. You don't owe me anything. You look to God, God, I love you. I want to serve you. You don't owe me anything. Now, it's great what you can get because he's a generous father, but it's not going to work if you go to your dad and say, you owe me. You owe me. I'm entitled to something. So it starts out by saying, you don't owe me anything. All right? So you look to people who you, you maybe you didn't even realize you put pressure on people. You it like it's a relationship like I'll just say wife since, you know, I'm married and I have a wife. It, it just puts pressure on her. If we get married and all of a sudden say, OK, now you owe me. You're my wife. You need to start acting like my wife because you owe me because you're my wife. Or it could turn around and say, well, you're my husband. You need, you owe me this. You owe me respect. You owe me love. You owe me romance. And I said, well, you owe me some respect and you owe me some things. Oh, man. What would happen in a relationship if people would go like, hey, we're, we're going to get married. And I just want you to know we're going to start out debt free. You don't owe me anything. I'm here to be who you need me and want me, and I should be to you, to God, to community, to church. And I'm here to serve you. You don't owe me anything. And I like it as we go through life. You want to really put it down to the lowest, simplest level of being spiritual and living a debt-free life and canceling everybody's debts. It works like this. You don't owe me anything, not even an apology. Huh? I'm telling you, through my life, probably yours too, I've had people that, I, you know, I didn't even know they, I didn't even know I'd done anything to them. You know, I didn't know they, they were upset about something. I didn't even know. And yet, they're waiting for my apology. <laughs> and I didn't even know they needed one. I'd probably give them one if I knew what I'd done. I guess I could make up one just to make it sound good. But what kind of life is that? You see how you keep things hanging over people, not living the Jesus spiritual life of debt, debt canceling. You don't owe me anything. You get this. You don't owe me. You don't owe me an apology. You don't owe me an explanation. Get that. What kind of person lives like that? Jesus. Jesus does. You don't even owe me an explanation. You don't owe me respect. Nope. To live a debt free life. 
cancels debts. That's a debt-free life. So because we think debt-free life means uh, I don't owe anybody any money. No, but a debt-free life is nobody owes you anything. A spiritual person walks debt-free. You don't owe me anything. I'm here to be what you need me to be. Now, you start doing that towards the Lord, and you're not entitled. Uh, he's, he's very generous, but you're not entitled. You look to your relationships. You look to your church. Look, pastor, boss, imagine that. Like, I'm here to serve this company and do it unto the Lord and glorify the Lord. And uh, I need to get paid, but I'm not entitled to special treatment or, you know, I'm not going to be offended if you didn't send me a thank you note when I put in a couple of extra hours. You don't owe me a thank you. You don't owe me a, a handshake. You don't owe me a pat on the back. I'm going to live debt free. I'm canceling everybody's debt so I can say, forgive me my debts as I forgive everybody, everyone who's, who's has debts towards me. So renew your mind. And uh, tell yourself, I'm not entitled to anything. I'm only the servant of the Lord. We say, oh, you know, I just want to serve you, Lord. Just use, <laughs> I love this, just use me, Lord. And then when he does, you go, well, where's the applause? <laughs> Where? <laughs> I thought you just wanted to be a servant, you know, but then we get all entangled in that. So here's what you do. Make yourself a gift. Because, you know, you can be blessed. God will bless you. God's so, so many blessings. And you'll get blessed. But if you can turn yourself into gift, into a gift, that's what Jesus did, right? And Paul let us know that in our theology. This salvation is what? It's a gift. Jesus is a gift from God. And if, I, if I'm going to be a gift to you and stay a gift to you, then I can't make you owe me something. If Jesus is going to be my gift and salvation is a gift, then it needs to stay a gift. And then I serve him because I want to, but he's not saying, you owe me, you. No, he deserves it. Yeah, because he's so great, I want to serve him. But I got to change my thinking. You know, I'm debt-free starting out with Jesus. You need to let people be debt-free starting off for you, for you with you. You want to have a great move of God? You start living a debt-free life. Cancel everybody's debt. Nobody owes you anything. They don't owe you an apology, explanation, nothing. You're here to serve the Lord and to serve each other. Well, so glad you could join us. I hope that meant something to you. It's been life-changing for me, and it is the road, forgiving people. Have you forgiven everybody? If you want to hear about the Welsh revival, they said, have, do you want a revival? Have you forgiven everybody? Debt-free living, that's the way to go. Well, thank you for joining us, and we're just continuing to pray. Lord, rend the heavens and come down. Till next time, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. Push the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode, and spread the word on social media. For more episodes and resources, go to reviveusnowpodcast.com. Until next time, keep on running for revival.